national, we're missing a kid, so we're going to record this class day. No, it's national. Monday, uh, it's national, November 6th. It's national, some kid promised not to talk day, and you can already hear her voice on the video. Oh. One of our people, and now she's touching the class like they all imitated her voice. Oh, just the best. Speaking of YouTube, if you were unaware of uh, our school announcements thing where you get like kids who act in the things, we have on YouTube and you can subscribe to Charge of Productions and you can become one of their ones of followers. Uh, so if you would like to subscribe, I figured I'd put that information out there. We are going to talk about the homework in a moment. Uh, grade over here is updated. It includes all of the B points you may have lost or gained and your quiz from last week, as long as you took it. And no, the homework. If you turned in the homework, it is included. If you have not turned in the homework, then I'm not counting it against you because it's not due till tonight. Let's go. Tomorrow, we have a fundraiser. I Not tomorrow. Wednesday, we have a fundraiser. I have no idea how this is going to go. We have never done it before. This is my first time for the school doing it and the first time we're doing it in my class. But apparently Wednesday, they're going to be coming in and explaining the fundraiser. I do not know how much reading we're going to get done. I don't know how this week is going to go. It's going to be a little chaotic. I do know, well, one, if you ask me questions, I'm going to point to this. This is literally all I know about the fundraiser. So if it's not written up there, I don't know the answer. I know you get prizes. I know you're supposed to have information uh, that has, like, people's contact information as far as adults that you know with credit cards because you're going to be begging people for money. You're going to become a professional beggar. And then if you are a successful beggar, they get to throw money at you, and then we get to throw prizes at you, and then you get to flex on other kids. If you don't have a phone, you can use email, and you have this thing called an iPad. And you're going to go tucka 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 and then you should be good. So you want to go and try to get contacts for people who are related to you or that you know that have a credit card. And you're going to go, please send me money, money, because my school is poor and my teacher's kids eat rocks. Or something like that. And so that will be on Wednesday. So hopefully we can hook you guys up with prizes on Wednesday. Yay! All right. Um, homework. This is technically due tonight. I count it late, 8 a.m. tomorrow. So I guess you could wake up in the middle of the night and do it, but that sounds kind of exhausting. If it's not done by 8 a.m., that's what's going to cost you the three B points. You don't have to stand tomorrow. That'll be Wednesday when we do the fundraiser. That's the day you have to stand if it's not turned in. Not turning it in by tomorrow means it becomes a late grade and costs you the three points. It's already graded if you've turned it in. If you've already turned it in, you may want to go look at it at some point because I've had kids who turned it in and have a zero on it because they did not follow directions. And if you turn it in and you did not follow directions, it does count as a late grade. If you want to check your grade right now, right now is after class, and you're more than welcome to, but not right now, right now. Silly kids. You get to be responsible later. But I just figured I'd remind you to check, and I'll send out reminders to you from there. Hi. Do you have to like write it on paper, or do you have to type it in the box? <laughs> type it in the box. All right. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you have to wait a minute in class, though. Well, you gave stolen. stolen. It's not a me issue. I'm not going to do a little teaching. Mm -hmm. As far as quiz went, uh, going through and taking a look at it, uh, the average across all of my classes was an 80%. This class was slightly above that at an 82%. And we had one kid in this class get a perfect score. That's me. So go with that one kid who got the perfect score. Uh, on this one, you guys are doing better. There was only three questions you guys struggled on. Whereas when I first started dating you guys' this quizzes at the beginning of the year, and I would look at like your average class grade, it was usually like between 30 and 60% on each question. On this one, your average on each question was 70, 80, 90%. There was even a couple that were almost 100%. So you guys did better on this one. Even though I read most of it to you, did the same thing with short stories. I read most of those to you, you guys still struggled. It's almost like some of you are getting smarter and better at doing things. I know. Crazy talk. I think I have read the book. That counts as being smarter. Ish. Because I didn't read any So <laughs> that counts as getting smarter. Wait. So the three questions. Only one of them dealt with Shadow Club. The other two questions were the two grammar questions that we struggled on. 
Uh, it says, what would be a good theme for the story up to this point? What was the definition of theme? Thing that we learn. Things that we learn. On this one, you sort of had to go through it and think about the book. Sometimes anger and hatred can be really good things. The only only one character really has anger and hatred. That's Tyson, maybe? I guess Jared is, hates Tyson Austin. has problems. But it doesn't really seem like a good thing, so I wouldn't count that one. You should never get in a fight with a crazy kid. You should definitely That is good fight. advice, but not necessarily a theme that we have so far. Um, don't try to do things you aren't good at doing. Well, all of the Shadow Club members are trying to do things they're not good at doing, where apparently the other people are better at them than they're doing. Sometimes bullies don't have to use their fists. Do we have bullies in the book so far? Yes. yes. Have they been beating each other up? No. no. That would be your best theme. The idea that bullies don't ever have to use fists would fall apart. They kill each other with kindness. Yes. Oh and then our two God. grammar questions we struggled a little bit on. Apparently, not knowing what verbs are is a thing. Verbs are action words, the things that require you to do in action. One of our words in the I enjoy reading the pranks by the Shadow Club in the book was easy. A lot of people got this one, reading. But most of you put pranks. And pranks is a noun. It's a thing, like a joke. Now, it can be a verb, like ha ha, I prank Lucas, his shoe's on fire, ha 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 ha. That makes it a verb if you prank somebody. But here when it says, the pranks, makes it a noun. The other verb in a sentence is another action you can do. Like, I enjoy torturing kids. I enjoy being sassy. I enjoy seeing kids learn. The verb in those sentences would be? Enjoy. Yeah, that's our other word. So enjoy was one and reading was one. Enjoy is a verb. And then our last one. You had to tell me what part of speech bully was. Is it a noun, a verb, an adjective? It can be any of those. Like if I say, hey, put away that bully book. Bully is an adjective describing book. If I say, Ryan, did you beat up that kid? You're being a bully. That's now a noun describing an object. If I say, uh-oh, Ryan was bullying Kaysen and tying his shoes together. Now Ryan was being used as a verb because he bullied somebody else. So it all depends on how you're using it. Austin is a bit of a bully, is used as a <coughs> noun. Good and job. Now. And then, especially when he tries to bully Jared, would be? Adjective. Adjective. Verb. Nicely done. So your answer would be a verb and a noun. I totally got that right. And apparently, grammar is a thing that we struggle with. Yep. Oh. Just call Hi, Emery. Just don't I put anything. noun and adjective. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'd be wrong. I think that be wrong? Yeah, no. Okay, well, wait a brag. If you did not do well on this and you would like to redo it, you're welcome to and to get up to a C minus. The drawback is I didn't have a lot of questions to go over because people did fairly well on it. So I don't have ones I could really go through and help you with. If you have questions, you can always come ask, but you're welcome to redo it to get up to your C minus if you want. Hi, Lucas. Can we get candy because we did so well? Ooh, we get one of these, which is almost like candy, but you can't share it. That one's just for you. Thank you. Get back in there, save it for the next one. All right, let's see, Shadow Club. Ah, so our next checkpoint is page 130 by this Friday, because the end of the book is due next Friday. What? So we're going to get to page 130 this Friday. We have a hard problem. Well, we have a quiz. How many pages are there? Really, what it says right there. Oh, good job. There we go. Uh, so that'll be our next checkpoint. Again, my goal is to try to read enough to get us up to like close to page 100, maybe a little bit past, but I do have to give you some reading on your own. And we are to the exciting part of the book. We're past all the exposition, so it shouldn't be a major issue. So we've covered all of these characters already, but now we have new characters. So we so we have we talked about the gopher. We, oh, so real quick, because this was one of the ones that people didn't do poorly enough on me to go over, but people kept asking me. When Jared wants to start the Shadow Club, Cheryl is not the one who convinces him to start it. It's what? Cheryl Austin? has the idea yeah, of the it Shadow was Club. Austin makes it. Yeah. Austin. yeah. When this, during this race scene, when Austin is the one that beats him and then starts calling him Gopher and everyone chants and makes fun of him, and he stands up and he was like, we're going to make that club. Austin's the one that convinces him. So Austin's one that has the idea of is there being a general. 
Okay. Then they go to Stonehenge, which is the place out in the woods where it has like a house that fell down. And now we meet the new Shadow Club members. Yes. And these are the seven people in the Shadow Club. So I'm going to go through and help you. So Jared we've met. Who does Jared hate? The main Because what is Austin better at doing? Running. Running. Nice Rebecca. So, Cheryl, who does Cheryl not like? Rebecca. 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 What's Rebecca better at doing? Singing. 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 And then we started getting to our new-ish people. Randall, who was Cheryl's brother. Drew. What is he good at doing? Swimming. And then the kid he hates. Drew. Drew. That's Drew Landers. So we're going to get to his uh, prank today. And then these four are brand new that they added. So do you know what Jason is good at? Uh, uh, hold on. That's my dad. Um, oh, of um, instrument. Good job. Do you remember which one? Trumpet. Yeah, trumpet. Yeah. Trumpet. Yes. trumpet. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, yes. like um. Um, it, it's a. They, they put slime. It's a get some like weird kid. I don't really. It is. Who? It's the same name as a food that people like. Hamburger. Not bad. Hamburger. Yes. His name was David Hamburger. David Burglar. Hamburger. Wait, how do you guys And Abby Singer. What is she good at? Singing. No. She's super pretty and popular. It's like uh, the girl she doesn't like? Dan. Oh, Sarah Donovan. Or, or, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Who names our kids Vera? I don't know who Mr. and Mrs. Donaldson, apparently. That's terrible. And Karen Hahn? OP. Is good at? Math. Math. Yeah, she's super smart. She's intelligent. What does the OP stand for? The one not, point. There you go. It is not overpowered. Because she's oh, like, like, she's like, she's like, like somebody beats her by one point. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it's a boy. And Darren is good at? That's something. He's our sports guy. Oh, and Ernie. Ernie or Ernie. 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 <gasps> so we now have these are the members of the Shadow Club. We did a prank on uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. What happened with her? David with the trumpet. Slime. 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 And Vera. And then she likes like a younger person. I mean, nowadays people don't have diaries, but I guess it's sort of like someone took pictures from your private stories and then like photo, not photoshopped it, but uh, screenshotted it and then just posted them all around the school. Oh, snap. Yeah, snap, chat, snap, chat, chat. 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 Uh, and that's sort of what happens here. And what was the embarrassing thing in her diary? She liked this weird She liked this weird young kid. He's super short. He's like a midget. Yeah. Short kid. That's so weird. Wasn't his name Ian or something? It was not. 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 So this was the thermos. So the oh, thermos is essentially you guys have go. your thing there. I have the transformer one. Oh, one that says transformers. But I have that one. Trans. Uh, oh, this is yeah. snake. Rebecca freaking out with the snake. Rebecca. And then, <laughs> That's me. And then the trumpet. Hey, no one has that in band. Which has the sliming of the people in band. <laughs> and. Now, oh, let's oh, figure out we're going to no. get to the rest oh of the pranks God. and the things that happen. Oh my God, he on F go mode. All right, let's see. I think we're on 79. Page 74. Dude, that's, that's in the middle of the chapter. Correct. Oh, wow. Can we restart at this? Can we start at the... Oh, can we like restart? We can. It's on my website, or my Canvas page. So about halfway down, where it says the next trick. So we have just finished doing the sliding of people. Wait, can you do this? That just, I literally just told you. We just finished with the sliming in the band. That's oh, I'm really kidding, man. I thought we were oh, yeah, you The next trick, by far, was the most dangerous. I was there because it was my turn to pull a prank. Cheryl and Randall came along to watch. It was midnight, Wednesday. We stood outside Drew Lander's open bedroom window. Maybe we ought to think of another trick, oh, yeah, said Cheryl. Dish. The lights were out in the house, and we were sure Drew was asleep, but still. No way, said Randall. This is perfect. Perfect. We have to do it. Trust me, 
Drew can sleep through anything. Once, he fell asleep in that, and they couldn't wake him <coughs> up. They had to call in the nurse, Cheryl turned to me. If you still want to do it, then I'm with you. I smiled and carefully removed the screen, then climbed in through the open window. Drew Lander's room was a mess. I mean, I've seen my room get pretty scary, but this was a pigsty. It was hard to walk without stepping on things that crunched. Drew slept under a mass of covers in his bed. We could hear him snoring more loudly than the roar of the filter on the huge fish aquarium in the corner. Look at this, whispered Randall, pointing to a whole row of swimming trophies on a shelf above the aquarium. Cheryl put her finger to her lips to shut him up. Drew didn't hear a thing. He continued snoring as I very carefully rolled the covers away from his feet. He was wearing dirty socks. Moving a fraction of an inch per second, I peeled back the socks until his feet, which smelled a little like chlorine and a little like vinegar, were sticking straight up at me. I reached my hand out to Cheryl, and she handed me the nail polish. When Drew woke up in the morning, just as we had thought, he didn't change his socks. And 15 hours after we had left his house, an incredibly embarrassed Drew Landers had to explain to the entire swim team why his toenails were painted red. To help you out, I even took a picture of my painted toenails to help you out. Oh, 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 those are not yours, right? Bunch of haters. Thank you. I appreciate you saying I have such feminine feet. Eric Tilfoil, the basketball star, was a sweater. Not the kind you wear, but the kind that drips all over the floor during a basketball game. Oh, yeah, he puts the stuff in his Antiperspirant didn't help his sweat sweating problem very much. But, as Darren told us, Eric would always roll on a sizable helping of antiperspirant under his arms before going out onto the court. Before I get to continue this, when I have to explain a thing that's going to make it make sense, you have to know what color blindness is. Uh, if, when I was a kid, way back in the day, I thought colorblind meant that you saw the world in like black and white, like you couldn't see color, but that's not how colorblind works. It just, there's a couple different main types. Red, green colorblind is the main one, and it just means that red and green look the same. Like when you see them, they, your eyes perceive them as the same shade. And there's one that's slightly less common that is a blue-yellow where both blue and yellow appear to be pretty much the same shade when you look at them. So it's like if you were to look at both Alice and Lucas's outfits, it would just look like they have the same shade color on. So on here, if you are not red-green colorblind, you should be able to see things in the circles. You should see a 62, a 6, and a 51. And then that'll help you. It looks like a 91. I thought it was a 71. That's a 74. It's a 74. Should be a 74. I was just seeing. <laughs> paying attention. And to see if it would freak you out. But yeah, and so on this one, if you can see the 74, you'll also see it's two different greens. Like this is this yellowy green. Because if you cannot see this part of it, all you're going to see is 71. And that tells them that you are partially colorblind. If you can see the whole four, then that means you should be What's good. the next one? Does that mean What's I'm partially 62? colorblind? No. Yep. That one doesn't have as much. Some do, some don't. It's just on this one you can't. <laughs> I cannot see that line. This one that goes right here? I, I thought I that was the 71. Then That's nice. You probably have a slight color blindness. That's the thing <laughs> <laughs> Guys, please stop laughing. Yeah. It's not her fault she can't see you. Oh, wait, that's not how color blind works again. That's silly. <laughs> The trick that Abby planned turned out to be much more complicated than it sounded because not only did we have to switch antiperspirant bottles, but we also had to make sure that Eric never saw what he was coating his armpits with. In the end, we had to black out the locker room at the perfect moment just to keep Eric and the rest of the basketball team in the dark as to what was going on. 
We were all there in the stands when the basketball team came out of the dark locker room and into the gym. Darren looked up from the floor and gave us the OK sign. The team wore their warm-ups through the layup drills. Finally, when the game was about to start, the warm-ups came off, revealing the team uniforms. Eric's was already beginning to look sweaty. It was a jump ball, and of course, Eric jumped. His arm went up, and in the excitement, nobody noticed Eric's underarms but the referee, and the whistle dropped out of his mouth. The other team had possession of the ball, and Eric ran down the court, taking his position as center of the 2-1-2 zone. His arms went up, and that's when everyone else saw the fluorescent green sweat under his arms, soaking the sides of his shirt. Well, the captain of the other team dribbled the ball for the defense and stopped dead when he saw Eric's little problem. Hey, what's with the armpits, dude? said the kid of the ball. Now, when somebody says something about your armpits, sorry, hiccups, you have to look. You can't help it. Even if you're in the middle of a basketball game, Eric reached under his left arm and came out with a fluorescent green hand. The kid shot a basket over Eric's head to score. Had the joke ended there, we would have been more than satisfied. But it didn't. We didn't count on Eric being colorblind. Ah, I'm bleeding! cried Eric, stumbling around the court, showing everybody his very green hands. I'm bleeding! I'm bleeding! The game sort of stopped as everyone tried to figure out if this could be possible. If it was, Eric must have been an alien. Help! I'm bleeding! I'm bleeding! Call the nurse! And everyone was so confused and dumbfounded by this weird turn of events that the nurse was called immediately. The most obnoxious of our tricks was a doubleheader. It involved two kids, and one of them was lost in space. You see, Mr. Milburn, the science teacher, had a collection of animals in his classroom. Animals that range from gerbils to lizards. <coughs> Tommy Nichols, the ninth grade's foremost brain, kept his pride and joy in Mr. Milburn's room. Octavia, his beloved pet tarantula. Sometime after lunch, Tommy noticed that Octavia was missing. But, try as he might, he could not seem to find her. She was not in her cage. She was not hiding in the bookshelf. It seemed she was nowhere in the room, and nobody could find her. Except for me, who has a picture. Uh, if you don't want to see a tarantula, then don't look up here. But for those of you who don't know what it looks like, there's a little tarantula. What's that one on my head? That's where they are. Why is it so shiny? Yeah. Why is it fuzzy? There's different, there's different species of them. There's ones that are hairy and ones that are not hairy. And that one looks like a zebra. Exactly. I, 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 got, I got a tarantula on my head once. <laughs> no. And nobody could find her. Lost in space found her. Or should I say she found him. Well, I was particularly mad at Austin that day, so I couldn't wait to see the trick pulled off. You see, Austin had called me gopher so much that everyone had started to call me that. I couldn't wait to get back at him. Anyway, it was a rainy day, so Austin, as well as everyone else, came to school in a hooded jacket. In a homeroom, at the end of the day, everyone put on their coats and waited for the bell to ring. Ralphie Sherman saw it first. Hey, Austin, there's something in your hood. Yeah, sure, said Austin. And because nobody ever believed a word Ralphie said, if there was something in my hood, would I do this? And Austin, thinking himself pretty clever, put his hood on. When he pulled his hood off again, a tarantula was sitting on his head. <laughs> he screamed, running around the room. Get it off me! Get it off me! Does that mean? He wouldn't touch it. The thing was sitting smack on the middle of his head, but he was too grossed out to actually touch it. Well, just like with the snake, everybody in the room, including Mrs. Marlowe, our homeroom teacher, began to scream. 
Meanwhile, Austin ran around the room with Tommy Nichols running behind him, crying, Don't hurt her! Don't hurt Octavia! She doesn't bite! She's a good tarantula! Yes. However, when a tarantula is doing push-ups on your scalp, you don't care how good it is, you just want it off. Watching Austin turn white as a ghost was the high point of my day. And then, as if it wasn't bad enough, Octavia got freaked out and tried to climb off. Unfortunately, the easiest way off of Austin's head was down the back of his shirt. Austin fell to the ground, shaking his shirt, but Octavia wouldn't come out. She'd had enough for one day. Austin tore off his shirt, ripping out all the buttons, and Octavia went sailing across the room. When she landed, she wasted no time in racing across the floor for a place to hide. Don't hurt her, yelled Tommy Nichols. She's tame. She's a domesticated spider. But no one much cared. While most everyone stood on the tables, Octavia scampered around the room between the table legs until she finally met an untimely end under the heel of Richard Ferguson's shoe. Lost in space, sat on the floor in a daze. For once, actually lost in space. Tommy Nichols had collapsed to his knees in tears, mourning his dearly departed spider. And Richard Ferguson threw his shoe into the waste paper basket, choosing to walk home barefoot. Uh, when I was looking for my pictures of a spider on a head, I don't know if you guys know what movie this is. All oh, Home Alone. Oh, oh, yeah. Home Alone. Nice one. Oh, my love. But I figured that was too good of a scene not to put up there also. So now we get to celebrate all of these things they did, and we get to get to the next big part of the book. Just doing the pranks was only the beginning. Now we get to get to the fun stuff. Celebration at Stonehenge. Let's go! It was the third Friday after the signing of the charter, and as usual, we met at Stonehenge. Oh, I have a new Stonehenge picture, too. I tried to find something close to what they do, where it has like the outline of a house and it's in the woods. Their Stonehenge has like a more of a basement to it, where you like sit down inside of it. It's so, like they're not sitting even with the ground. Their Stonehenge, they're sitting down inside like where it comes yeah. down. And you have like this little uh, stone stuff that comes up and around it and stuff Remember from there. Remember walking in the forest and just seeing like a bunch of random kids just oh, sitting there? Sounds like a nightmare to me. Just in general, walking anywhere and seeing a bunch of kids sounds like a nightmare. Toro will pick up with nightmares about kids in the forest. Hi, Chloe. Children? Oh. That makes more sense. 